that's all, just as I was saying, he was getting caught with the left hand oh, because he carries that right shot. up in. You ever hear Monster? No. Monster. Japanese fighter called Monks. This is a Monks. Crazy, crazy dude. His nickname is, uh, was it the Monster or the Beast? Monster. The Monster. He's a, he knew he's a. Oh, the color hair? No. He is, is good. 21 and 0, undefeated. Um, and he's a three division champion. He, he's he's good, a big puncher. He was champ in 112. No, no, no. Fuck Bam, a puncher. He, he is good. The embodiment of retribution in the bantamweight division. The undefeated Japanese monster with one of the highest knockout rates in boxing. The guy is at the top of the food chain. No one wants to fight him, and boxers are afraid of him. Signing a contract to fight him is like being locked in a cage with a bloodthirsty beast who will start hunting you down from the very first seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, Naoya Inoue and the fights that made him the living embodiment of fear. 1. Adrian Hernandez our monster comes straight from Japan. It's undoubtedly a great country, but when it comes to boxing, it has major challenges. Just look at most Japanese boxers. Short in height, slim build, they simply look small. It's incredibly difficult to achieve success in boxing with such a physique, unless you consider the bantamweight and lightweight divisions. But wait, to conquer a weight class, you need to defeat the champion. And who dominates these divisions? That's right, Mexicans and Filipinos, whose boxing styles are ranked at the top of the world. As boxing history has shown, it is incredibly difficult to compete with such opponents. Amazing speed, a finely honed style, excellent technique, and lightning fast reflexes. Every challenger who faces a champion encounters all this. It's tough not only for Japanese boxers, but for the entire world to compete with these styles. But the hero of our story literally changed the balance of power and rewrote history. The Japanese monster had five victories since his debut, and his knockouts and exciting style allowed him to fight for a title in just his sixth bout. Inoue feared nothing and no one, and immediately decided to fight the best, most dangerous, and dominant champion in the light flyweight division, Adrian Hernandez. At that time, Big Bang was one of the best fighters in the division, as evidenced by his WBC title and four successful defenses, with a 29-2 record overall. He fiercely punished his opponents, and experts predicted he would go down as one of the greatest fighters in this weight class and this Mexican killer was the opponent of a 20-year-old Japanese guy. Absolute madness! However, Naoya wasn't concerned about the experience gap and, showing no respect for his opponent, took the center of the ring and immediately started throwing sharp, heavy, straight punches to all levels. All the defending champion could offer were ineffective body shots and attempts at working with combinations. By the end of the fourth round, Adrian finally seemed to come up with a plan. He tried to close the distance and force the Japanese fighter into a close-range brawl. Inoue needed just one exchange to come up with a strategy. From then on, every time they got close, the Japanese fighter would throw uppercuts, quickly exit the line of attack, and counter his opponent with a devastating right straight. During one of these exchanges, Naoya stunned him hard and then finished him off with an incredible right hand. The champion went down to his knees and the referee stopped the Mexican suffering. Naoya in a way won his first belt of a major organization and became a full-fledged world champion. 2. Yon Boye 
the fight against the renowned Frenchman who had 41 wins and 4 losses, is rightfully considered one of the best in the Japanese fighter's career. The Frenchman was a dangerous puncher with amazing speed, but even with such qualities he lost the fight before the bell rang because he was openly afraid of the Japanese monster. From the very beginning, Inoue took control. For the first minute, he didn't even throw any punches, but his opponent already felt the tension and was actively moving around the ring. With his first effective attack, the Japanese fighter cornered his opponent, who was now fighting out of desperation and hopelessness. Like any high-level fighter, Inoue takes very few hits even when moving forward. And if a punch does land, he sees it and absorbs the impact with head movement. After landing a few right hands around his opponent's guard, and when Boyu's left hand returned to his chin, Inoue unexpectedly landed a left hook at mid-range, sending the challenger down for the first time. Notice how Inoue lands a left hook while standing almost directly in front of his opponent. He throws the punch up while being shorter and still maintains a solid position with bent knees and chin tucked. Perfect! The beating continued in the second round. The Frenchman moved actively and tried to avoid getting trapped by Naoya, but the Japanese calmly cut him off from the open space and landed shots to the delight of the local crowd. <laughs> In the third round, it was all over. After Inoue fed his opponent left hooks to the head, Boyu raised his hands high, expecting a punch to the chin while retreating straight back. The Japanese fighter took advantage and struck with a left hook to the liver. A second knockdown. Then came a third from a punch to the same vulnerable area. and then a fourth knockdown, which ended in a knockout. Inoue followed the old boxing rule. If you hit the liver, then hit it again. The pain was unbearable and eventually broke the Frenchman. He's, he's better than Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao was blue like that. Death is good. He looks like a fucking pop star. Oh, wait till he get on these motherfuckers. 3. Jamie McDonnell After cleaning out the division of top opposition and prospects, Inoue faced a problem that couldn't be solved. The Japanese fighter wanted unification, but the issue was that the remaining champions were with different promoters who didn't want to feed their fighters to the Japanese monster. Leaving behind his WBO World Super Flyweight title, the Japanese decided to try his luck and collect belts in the bantamweight division. His first opponent was the WBA World Bantamweight Champion, Jamie McDonald. Jamie had 29 wins and only 2 losses, and he was rightfully considered one of the best fighters in the bantamweight division. This fighter had twice defeated the unbeaten Tomoki Kamita, a fighter who for some time was ranked pound for pound. That's why you, McDonald, that's a slip. He's going to call it a knockdown, though. Jamie hadn't lost in 10 years and had never been stopped. He was a reliable, experienced champion who had seen it all in the ring, but the Japanese monster craved flesh and blood. Jamie started with his lead hand. Only if he worked it like a machine gun, constantly moved, and made no mistakes could the champion hope to drag the Japanese monster into the second half of the fight. But it didn't work. After half a minute, Inoue easily closed the distance and threw a combination. It landed on the guard, but from the look on Jamie's face, it was clear he felt it. Looking for that right hand, looking for the left to the body as well early on. That's a danger shot for Inoue. McDonald just taking the weight back into the ropes there, just dropping those elbows. There was a hint of panic in his actions. He started retreating and stepping with crossed legs. The first sign of fear. Inoue prepared his left hook it made sense. The opponent was taller and was turtling up in defense. Midway through the round, the monster's left hook landed on the champion's forehead. Even that was enough to make McDonald's legs wobble. With the next attack, a right straight and a left uppercut. Um, yes, I think so. Uh, they're gonna have 10, 10, 
10 champions is a lot of champions. Right. And uh, I, I think the level on Japanese boxing is going up. Yep. And I think we are getting the respect we, uh, that we deserve. Four, Juan Carlos Payano. Naoya Inoue made a stunning start to the World Boxing Super Series with a brutal knockout of his quarterfinal opponent, Juan Carlos Payano, in the first round of their fight in Tokyo. Payano was ranked among the top three bantamweight fighters, and experts saw him as a finalist in the World Super Series. Yes, the Japanese fighter was a dangerous opponent for anyone, but Juan's fighting style should have posed problems for the Japanese knockout machine. The world didn't know yet about the fatality of a mistake in the fight with the Japanese monster. Payano didn't make a mistake in the fight. He made a mistake long before when he signed the contract. As soon as the bell rang, Naoya landed two vicious punches. With his left hand, he diverted the Dominican's attention, and with his right, he delivered a deadly and lightning-fast straight shot that knocked his opponent out cold. <laughs> A brilliant victory for Inoue. He was simply too good for a fighter like Juan Carlos. What's next? Today, Naoya confirmed his otherworldly boxing level and thrilled his home crowd with an exciting knockout. 5. Emmanuel Rodriguez The cherry on top was the star-studded showdown between the Japanese monster and the undefeated Emmanuel Rodriguez for the IBF World Bantamweight title. Emmanuel was a true star in his weight class. He had always thrilled fans with his mastery and outstanding technique, often finishing fights early. Rodriguez's personal record was 19-0, and he was supposed to be the toughest test in Naoya's career. The fight ended much earlier than expected. The World Boxing Super Series gathered thousands of fans who wanted to see a true war in the ring. But in reality, they witnessed another spectacular knockout from the Japanese monster. Rodriguez started the fight as the aggressor, trying to push Inoue out of position. Naoya successfully worked with counterattacks. From the very first seconds, the pace of the fight was intense. Both fighters put power into their punches, and the distance between them shortened by the second half of the first round. At the start of the second round, the Japanese fighter landed a precise left hook as he exited from mid-range, sending the Puerto Rican to the canvas. Right hand there, then finishes on the left. That left hand is Harding Rodriguez. Oh, oh, good straight shot. left hand there. Just Emmanuel got up. Inoue followed with a combination, ending with a right uppercut to the liver. A second knockdown. Yeah, so just as I was saying, he was getting caught with the left hand because oh, he carries that. Shot. Rodriguez got up again, but within moments he was down for the third time after another precise shot to the liver. He's going to continue, but he's on borrowed time. There's still two minutes left in the round. Down he goes. He the referee could not allow the Japanese fighter to continue breaking his opponent, so he stopped the fight. A brilliant victory for Inoue. He became the new IBF and WBA regular bantamweight world champion and advanced to the finals of the World Boxing Super Series. It's worth noting that Rodriguez had the right plan for the fight. He tried to displace the Japanese monster from his position, but Inoue's punch quality was on another level, and one mistake by the Puerto Rican proved fatal. It's important to note that Emmanuel is one of the most promising fighters of our time and rightfully held the championship, but today? He faced a fighter of an incredible level. What you think of him as a fighter? You've kind of both progressed in the pound-for-pound pound rankings together over the years. When did you first start watching him and what do you make of him now? I think I started watching him probably like a couple years ago. But um, he a fighter. He a fighter. He's definitely uh, someone that's... He got the whole package, I believe so. If you want to see a fighter that got the whole package, he's one of them. Definitely, for sure. Friends, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to reward us with a like and subscription. Do you think we'll ever see a clash between the American tank and the Japanese monster? Share your thoughts in the comments. It was the robustest boxing team. See you soon.